quote, does it ever stop? That question coming from President Trump after finding out that special counsel Robert Mueller is being forced by Congress to testify publicly on July 17th in what may be the most anticipated testimony of the Trump presidency so far. Mueller will answer questions from members of the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees after being slapped with a subpoena. Now, Mueller made clear, in his view, his 448-page report was his official statement and the only one he wants to give. But House Democrats are eager to question the special counsel about the evidence he uncovered and whether he would have charged the president with obstruction of justice, but for Justice Department precedent that a sitting president cannot be indicted. Republicans, of course, are planning to hammer Mueller on the origins of the investigation and raise concerns about the probe's integrity. CNN's Sarah Murray kicks off our coverage now on what is sure to be must-see TV. Look, the Mueller thing never stops. President Trump railing against congressional Democrats this afternoon after learning Robert Mueller will testify publicly for the first time since he started investigating the president and Russian election interference. How many times do we have to hear it? It never ends. It just keeps going on and on. At what point does it end? It's a disgrace. Mueller set to appear July 17th before the House Judiciary and Intelligence Committees. Democrats subpoenaed the special counsel who had hoped to avoid testifying publicly. Now, I hope and expect this to be the only time that I will speak to you in this manner. Mueller's appearance comes at a pivotal moment as Democrats weigh whether to dive into divisive impeachment proceedings. Either way, Democrats say Mueller's appearance will help Americans better understand his report. He will be a very compelling witness. But they're already managing expectations. Certainly the outlines of what he's going to talk about are in the report. So um, now many Americans haven't read the report. But again, I think we should be realistic about our expectations. The committees are expected to question Mueller in back-to-back -back hearings, followed by a closed-door session with the House Intelligence Committee and Mueller's staff to focus on the counterintelligence issues. Mueller's report concluded there was not enough evidence to charge members of the Trump campaign with conspiring with Russians. He left open the question of whether Trump obstructed justice, writing, if we had confidence that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. Any testimony from this office would not go beyond our report. We chose those words carefully, and the work speaks for itself. And the report is my testimony. Republicans are jumping at the chance to question the special counsel's conclusions. Bob Mueller better be prepared because I can tell you he will be mm. cross-examined for the first time and the American people will start to see the flaws in his report. Now, Bob Mueller has said he's going to stay within the four corners of the report if he were called to testify, but obviously that will not stop lawmakers from asking whatever they want to, Jake, particularly why Bob Mueller never subpoenaed Donald Trump for an interview and for his testimony, and as you mentioned, why he declined to bring these obstruction charges if there was enough, enough evidence there to recommend them. Back to you. All right, Sarah Murray, thanks so much. And joining me now to talk about this is President Trump's personal attorney, Jay Sekulow. Jay, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, Jake. So thanks. I guess uh, the first question, will the president try to block or limit Mueller's testimony in any form or tell the attorney general, Bob Barr, to do so? No, the president uh, turned this over, this issue over to the attorney general. The attorney general said, uh, attorney general Barr said it was fine for Bob Mueller to testify and now he's going to testify. So I think, look, I mean, what he said, what, what Bob Mueller said was that his report was his testimony. Now I expect that his testimony will be his report. So, uh, no, I, there's no, there's no legal moves that are being made here. Bob Mueller will testify. I'm sure he's going to stick to the, you know, what's in his report. I don't expect there's going to be a new revelation here. That certainly would be inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll find out when he testifies what he's going to say, but I expect it to be the report. I, should, I, I think I messed it up. Bill Barr is who I meant to say. Sorry about that. Um, are, are you worried? No, okay. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Are you worried at all uh, that Robert Mueller will testify that he did, in fact, intentionally leave it up to Congress to decide whether the president obstructed justice. Is that a concern? No, I, I tell you what it is. If you look at the volume two of the report, uh, of the report, which is the obstruction provision, the whole process is turned upside down. I think the biggest question Bob Mueller is going to have to ask himself is, or be asked is, do you really think it's the job of the special counsel to exonerate someone? Because prosecutors don't exonerate. The, you're presumed innocent until proven guilty or at least until a charge would be brought uh, in a court of law. Here, uh, he said that, you know, he was, he said, he specifically said, we're not saying the president uh, committed a crime, we're not exonerating him either, but the job of the special counsel is not 
to exonerate. I think that where this is conflated, and I think it was conflated in the report, it, was, it turned the whole burden of proof and our presumptions of innocence upside down. I think that's going to be a big question he's going to have to answer. Why do you think he did that, he and his staff? I don't think they could come to a conclusion uh, that there was, in fact, obstruction of justice. And he did, what, under the Department of Justice guidelines, if a prosecutor cannot make that determination, which he did not, uh, it then is reviewed by the superiors here. It's the attorney general, the deputy attorney general. And they said, based on the evidence that Bob Mueller put forward in his report, that there, in fact, was not obstructive intent, which, of course, would be required for obstruction of justice. So Bob Mueller will have to explain this report, especially the volume two aspect, because, frankly, it, I, and I've read it multiple times, and I'm glad you said at the beginning, and maybe members of Congress yeah. will actually read this report now. Uh, the fact of the matter is, it's not a coherent legal argument in, in volume two. As I said, it turned the burden of proofs upside down, and it was really incorrect as a matter of law. Has the president read the Mueller report? The president said he's reviewed it. I have not had, uh, I'm not going to discuss conversations I've had uh, with the president uh, or not on this. I don't know the details of what uh, he's reviewed. Uh, I will tell you this, his lawyers have. We have reviewed it uh, thoroughly more than once. And uh, it doesn't get, it's not an easier read the second or third time around, to tell you the truth. It's very convoluted. It's very hard to follow. And I know people are, are, are trying to shed a new light on it. But I expect what, Jake, honestly, I expect that Bob Mueller's going to say, Here's what I said. I said what I said in report. That's my conclusion. Uh, you know, it was interesting when he, when he made his statement back a month ago, he said he thought it would be inappropriate to appear before Congress to respond or to even ans answer questions from the press. So now he's in a situation where he's agreed to do it. Fine. We'll see what he has to say. I don't expect any uh, real new revelations in any of this. I think we're going to we're hear more of the same of what's in it. And they did not make a conclusion uh, that ultimately the Attorney General the Department of Justice did make. What if he does go beyond uh, the parameters uh, of the Mueller report? What will you do? Are you anticipating, are you preparing for him to do something like that? Well, I mean, we, look, you, you can't run into, you're not going to run into the, the proceeding and stop the proceeding. I mean, there's, you know, we actually, unlike others, we respect the separation of powers here and whose job and responsibility is. But, I, you know, I can't, I can't imagine a circumstance where he's going to start extrapolating something that's not in the report now, I mean, the issue on the counterintelligence investigation, that's going to be done in closed-door session, so th that, that's completely separate. But I can't imagine a, a scenario where he's going to change something, uh, come to a different conclusion after his report has been issued when he said, my report is my testimony. So mm -hmm. I, I just, it's, it's hard to speculate what that would actually be. I, I mean, frankly, I think that's why you're seeing this kind of initial enthusiasm and lowering of expectations, you know, 24 hours later. It seems likely that the Democrats are doing this because most Americans, unlike you and I, most Americans have not read the Mueller report and they want yeah. them to know what's in it. Do you think that House Democrats will ultimately begin impeachment proceedings and, and are you preparing for that? I do not think they're going to begin, uh, start impeachment proceedings, first of all. Uh, you know, you got to go back to what would be the high crime and misdemeanor. I mean, it's going to be the outset. But I think politically, look, Politically, and Republicans have this experience, this is a non-starter. Uh, and, and look, the, the Democrats can say whatever they want to say, and, and that's up to them within their political caucus to determine what they're going to do. But to, to start an impeachment proceeding based on Bob Mueller's report, I think would be a, and I'm not, I'm not a political prognosticator here, but I think it would be a political mistake. Legally, it would be ridiculous. Politically, I think it would be very dangerous. Okay, so you don't think they will, but are you preparing for them to do so just in case? There is, obviously, I think it's a, a third of the, the Democratic caucus in the House is now on record saying they want impeachment proceedings to begin. Are you not preparing? We're not. We have no, we have no impeachment preparation team in place. So, no, because it, you just said it. I mean, there's an example. So one third of what they would need uh, is, is wants impeachment and two thirds do not. And right. look, you look at some of the key districts involved here. Uh, there's a lot of members of the of the party that the Democratic Party that are not going to want impeachment. It does not bode well uh, for them on reelection. So I look, I mean, Nancy Pelosi's doing what she's doing. She's the, the she's majority leader, speaker of the House. She's trying to control her caucus the best she can. There's going to be diversity within within their caucus. I get that. That's part of the political process. But I don't see uh, impeachment as a threat at all. Jay Sekula, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate your coming here. Hey, Jake, thanks for having me.